Have you ever heard of Googlebot or maybe the Google Index? <laughs> I will never forget one of my one of the jobs that I won over another web developer is they called it the Google algorithm, kind of like Alka Seltzer. <laughs> Anyway, it's the algorithm and a lot of business owners are just frustrated, right? Because they don't get it. In this video, we're really going to deep dive into Googlebot and we're going to talk to how to demystify it so that it makes a difference to your bottom line. So let's talk Googlebot, also called the Google algorithm. Maybe you've heard spiders. I well, thought it was kind of funny. Spiders, ooh, spiders. Um, you know, they visit your website, they index your site. It's all the same thing. So let's talk a little bit just quickly about what is Googlebot, right? What is the Google algorithm? The algorithm is a formula, okay? So think back to college or maybe even high school. Remember the library? There was a Dewey Decimal System. Maybe some of you are too young and you can just kind of zone out right now. But if you remember the Dewey Decimal System, remember you went into the library, you pulled out the card catalog, you went through the cards and you found that, that thing. Well, Google was founded at Stanford, okay? So Larry Page and Sergey Brin, they were finishing up their doctoral work. And they said, look, we're gonna build something that indexes all the professorship content. So the professors, the students, think about the vacuum of content that was built every day, research studies, stats, um, information, and it never made it to the library. So what happened to all that amazing Stanford content? It just, poof, disappeared. So Larry and Sergey said, we're gonna build a database that's gonna index and archive all the content on the Stanford campus. And this is how Google was born. And what we know today is this massive algorithm over 200 different elements to the Google algorithm. So you're like, whew, I don't have time for that. And quite frankly, neither do I. But here's the cool part. It's about the humans and not about the robot. Think about it. I spent years, I worked for Yahoo for many years, worked with million dollar advertisers at Yahoo. We would go to search marketing conferences and we'd all sit down and we would literally talk about every line of the Google algorithm that we knew. Yes, this is the kind of geek that I used to be. Uh, we thought that was interesting. <laughs> well, it was interesting, but the longer I was in that business, the more I realized that it was less about the Google algorithm and all about the human experience. It's about them. It's not about you. It's about what they want when they search. So we call it the, the we, we, we all the way home. Here's what we do and here's where we go and here's how you hire us and here's how great we are. You know, websites are built like uh, resumes and they're meant to be thought leadership platforms. Remember, if you're a Stanford professor in your respective niche, then you know your stuff. You are current, your website is current. You blog because you want to prove to Googlebot that you are on your A game. You're a Stanford professor in your field and you are doing research. You have stats. You're going to conferences. These are the kinds of things that make your website findable. So when Googlebot comes, it's trying to say, hey, what kind of professor are you? Now I have to prove it to Google. So the first thing I have to prove to him is I have a tight, technically sound website. I want you to go to a website called marketinggreater.com. M-A-R-K, marketinggreater.com. Now this tool is gonna to let you put in your website address. You don't have to put your email address unless you wanna be on HubSpot's mailing list for the rest of eternity. And then it's gonna run a technical report. And it's gonna give you very finite things that you can do to tweak your website and a score. The first thing I want you not to do is beat yourself up around that score. It might be 40, it might be 94, but it tells you how tight is my engine. Look, Google's not gonna rank your website if the technical aspects of your site are not great. It wants to make sure your engine is purring like a kitten. Now, once the engine is taken care of, then we can start worrying about our blogging. Now, some of you I'm sure have heard about blogging. I get lots of eye rolls when I talk about blogging. They're like, I don't got time with that for that. I got a guy for that. Here's the problem is, remember, Stanford professors publish. If they don't publish, they perish. Now think about this for a minute. If that was the standard that Google set up as its foundation, its algorithm, 
is to look at all the experts on the internet. Which ones are the Stanford professors and which ones are the posers? The posers don't blog. The posers don't socially engage. If you are a professor on your A game, you have a wonderful current site that's technically sound. You have a blog that is an ongoing commentary and research of your field. And of course, then you take that blog and you share it to all of your social circles. So a social circle in a university setting would be your, your peers, other people who are validating that your content on your blog or your website is good stuff and they appreciate that. So as a business owner, we must think about the fact that are we on our A game? And if we're not blogging and we're not socially engaged, think about would you put yourself on the first page of Google results if you had not published anything for a year? So what happens is when you launch a new website, Google comes usually within 24 to 48 hours, grabs all the content and says, awesome, you have all this great content, woo! It gets really excited. I make that up, but that's my own reality. And then it comes back in 24 hours and says, what do you got? Gimme, 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 what do you got? And then another 48 hours, what do you got? 72 hours, what do you got? And it sees nothing, 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 nothing. So what we're doing is we're training Google to ignore us. If we're on our A game, then we're blogging once a week, minimum. We are creating videos like I'm doing here today. We are socializing those videos. So you've got to put yourself in the Google bot's shoes and say, if I was looking at myself from the outside in as a bystander coming and walking by your website, are there cobwebs in the window, right? So I want you to try to start looking like a Stanford professor in your own need. That means <laughs> you need to have a nice, good, well-programmed website. It's got to look great, clearly, but it has to have, remember that engine has to be well-oiled. So run that marketinggrader.com score and fix the red that will show up in that report. The next thing I need you to do is to sit down with your team or hire a content writer and start writing. The blog part of it is, remember, that's the ongoing juice, if you will. Google is a voracious search engine. I always think about it as snacking Google. Who's a good Google? Who's a good boy? Right? You just got to keep throwing those Scooby snacks at it so it keeps coming back. And if you don't Scooby snack it, it's not going to keep coming back. And so you slowly become a out of date professor over time because you just launched your site, but you're not committed to ongoing content development. And trust me, Google's not going to give you, there's only 10 results on that page. It is not going to give that to you if you're not committed to being up to date and on your A game. Finally, I may get some eye rolls here, but social media. You, I have heard a thousand times from CEOs all over the country that we don't get business that way. If I had a buck for every time I heard that, I probably wouldn't need to be making YouTube videos. <laughs> but everyone says it, and I think a lot of businesses have gotten their business historically from word of mouth, which is great. I love word of mouth. However, over 80% of word of mouth will go and Google you. So first of all, they're going to check you out. Are you working in your mom's basement in your slippers? Or are you actually a company that I can trust? The website speaks volumes to that. It also speaks to your hiring and firing practices. You know, when people are looking for jobs today, they're going to go to the website and see if you look fun. Do I want to work there? Does that look like a pool place? Can I really do a give back there? If it's, a, if it's a dunder mufflin, right? If it looks like a place that's just like a cubicle farm and there's empty reception areas and empty lunch rooms, nobody works there. It goes down, right? So you have to think about, is your website the, mo the best indicator of your professorship level content? So let's recap. Your website, it's gotta have a great engine. Run that marketing grader score. Number two, make sure you're blogging. If you can only do once a month, I'm thrilled. Blog. Remember, blogs are on an RSS feed. That means that people can subscribe to it. So it's different than a page on your website because it's ever, ever evolving. And people can subscribe to it. So Google gives a tremendous amount of value and credibility to the blogs. The Googlebot loves blogs. Think about it, it's like a news feed. It's like a CNN news feed for your business. Of course, it expects the news feed to keep updating and have the most current content. So please blog. Put comments in the bottom. I'll keep, I'll keep an eye out for them. And make sure in those comments, you're asking me specific questions, and I will make sure to keep my eyes on it 
and get your responses because I know a lot of people are like, I just do not want to blog. I get it, but it's time. You've heard about it long enough. Finally, social media is not just for kids. And I don't care how old you are, remember the Google standard is if you're gonna be a professor, you will get peer validation of your content. Peer validation is you take your blog and you share it to all the social sites. Easy peasy. So you as a thought leader, as an expert, as a CEO, your job is to get what you know about your company, your institutional knowledge, into that blog. So here's a, here's a tip. You know, grab your cell phone. There's a recorder on there, I'm pretty sure. And just put a sticky note in your car with two or three topics you want to blog about. When you go in for your drive in the morning or your walk around your neighborhood with your dog, dictate into your phone. Then after you dictate about that topic, you're going to upload it to a transcription service like Rev, R-E-V dot com. Rev will transcribe that audio and it's like Christmas morning. The next day you hit this blog shows up and you have someone else edit it, someone else post it, and someone else put it onto social. So that you are putting your head around what's most important, which is the content. You are the professor. And then you've got people or you can hire vendors to then distribute that content. So remember, the Googlebot is looking for Stanford professors, professors that are on their A game. And when you think about the leaders in your respective space, you need to think about what are they doing to be professors in their own right? Look at competitor websites, the competitors you see over and over. They have the biggest booth at the trade show. You know? You know, think about the ones that are really killing it in your field. Take a look at what they're doing. My guess, that is going to be they have a really dynamite website. They are blogging on a weekly or daily basis and they understand the ecosystem that is social media. Whew, I know, that feels like a lot, but follow me and you'll be able to keep up. And it's just little tiny micro lessons that as a CEO, expert, leader in your field, you know, it's a game of inches, guys. It's little tiny inches and you have to keep moving toward that. Just like with any other marketing. Um, think about what traditional marketing can you get rid of and how can you take that and allocate it to being a Stanford professor in your field. And the Googlebot is gonna love you.